जाने जो मोती नहीं भे
ಸಮಸ್ತ ಜ್ಞಾನಂಜನ ಸಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುಣಿತಂಗೀನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ ವಂಚಾಕಲ್ಪತರೋಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯತಿ ಪಾವನ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ಮಹಾಮದನ್ಯಾ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಪ್ರದೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನಾಮನೆ ಗೌರತ್ವಿಷೆ ಗುರವೇ ಗೌರಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ರಾಧಿಕಾಯ ತದಾಲಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಭಕ್ತ ತದಭಕ್ತ ತವೈವಾಸ್ಮಿ ತವೈವಾಸ್ಮಿ ನಜಿವಾನು ತಯಾ ವಿಘ್ನಾಧೆ ತಂಗ್ನಯ ಮಾಮ my billions of dandos pranam in the lotus feet of my parmaradhyatam nitya lila prishtam vishnu pad shri shrimad bhakti prakar ke shogo swami har and send millions of dandos pranati in the lotus feet of my shiksha guru nitya lila prishtam vishnu pad shri shrimad bhakti vedanta swami har your our class is fourth day and uh, uh, fifth day everything is going on hari katha or for <coughs> today uh, in our program shivat kirtan anand prabhu has gone and fortunately today uh, parmat vaiti maharaj has also come So our festival is so successful. Hari Krishna and Kirtana Nanda Prabhu to speak two words and then Pat Krishna is doing it. Maharaj will speak. ವಿಷ್ಣುಪದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪುಸ್ತಾಯ ಭೂತಲೈ ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಿತಿ ನಾಮಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವಿ ಗೋಲ್ವಾಣಿ ಪಚಾನ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಶಿಶ್ವಿ ಪಾಸ್ ಪಚಾತೈಸ್ವತಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಮುಖ್ಯನಾಥ ಸ್ವೇದೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀ ಬಸದಿ ಗೋಪಕ್ತ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ All glory is to Sri Lal Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Maharaj. <laughs> I intend to follow the instruction of Chaitanya Chaitamrita when it says let thy words be few. The essence of Krishna consciousness can be put in just a few words. Chant Hare Krishna and be happy. Stay out of politics. Chant Hare Krishna and be happy. ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪುಸ್ತಕ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ 
नमस्ते सरस्वती देवी गुरुवाणी पुचारी देव निर्विशेष Thank you very much to allow me to be here today. Shana Rai Maharaj invited me to come and address today on the, as actually, um, his secretary asked me to say some words about the Vishma Vaishnava Rajshava and what we are trying, what service we are trying to offer to the Vaishnava community through this Shabbat. And I was very enlightened to come here for that purpose and to hear from Shilin Rain March and all the assembled Vaishnavas to get their association a great inspiration. very easy to address an assembly of dedicated Vaishnavas. One feels shy, ashamed, one cannot offer any tangible, elevating words to the devotees. But of course, simply to remember uh, the great souls is always my only solace. So today, as we are here in the spirit of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Nityananda Prabhu, in the spirit of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur and all the Acharyas, that very spirit which we have noticed to manifest wherever wonderful devotees try to transmit their nectar of their Gurudev to others, that we feel very comfortable and I want to uh, specifically, we always say Namo Vishnu Badai Krishna Bhastai Bhutta Leshi Madhu Bhaktivedanta Swami Dinamani, offer our obeisances to our uh, Diksha Guru, Srila uh, Prabhupada Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj. But we are made up by the mercy of so many Vaishnavas and Srila Prabhupada entered his Nitya Lila such a long, long time ago and in, in a somewhat hopeless stage after the departure of our Guru Deva we met many other senior Vaishnavas. As a matter of fact, the other day I was remem remem remembering that I visited Srila Narayan March in 1984 after we had just decided that we had to continue our spiritual life uh, with more autonomy and more uh, execution of our own criteria rather than to go on in an atmosphere where Vaishnava Aparat had become rampant and uh, there was no juice, there was no rust, there was no nectar in those days. The offices were all oh, the temple offices were places like my god brother just said where only politics were being discussed from morning to evening and I was wondering what am I doing here so I think some of you may have shared these moments also so then I, I went to Mathura and I met Shula Narayan Maharaj and I said you know I just left and I'm now on my own and uh, what recommendation you have for me? You want to help me? At that time he said, you better go to see Srila Srila Maharaj. So, uh, of course that recommendation was very welcome to me, by me, because I had read Sri Guru in His Grace. 
this book, this historical book, which uh, came from the talks of Srila Bhakti Rakakshina Deva Goswami Maj, which I think changed the way of seeing Vaishnavism, Vaishnava transcendental teachings for many of us, at least for me it changed my, my life and my view on many things I eternally indebted to Atriya Rishi Prabhu who gave me this book when I didn't expect it. <laughs> and so I, I was able to meet Srila Bhakti Rakakshina Maharaj and, and I want to offer my humble obeisances to the sweetness of every word I was able to receive from him to give us strength to go on and somehow other to take up a responsibility which we didn't feel at all capable of carrying out. But the question was there, who was going to go and do that job of preaching? And the first instruction I received from Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada was, the Vani is more important than the Vapu, you are out far from me, but you are preaching, that is the most dear to me, so don't try to become my personal secretary, give up your preaching. So, because I had in mind that maybe I could also be close to him, you know, like every disciple desires to be a secretary and give Guru Dev a massage and all this, you know. But he, the first thing he said, you go and preach and you do that for the rest of your life. So somehow other that's what, uh, that was our lifeline, what we cling on to. And so Srila Bhakti Rakakshila Maharaj, he, he, he encouraged us so much, he gave us so much yeah, you so much freedom, so much love, so much trust. Again, the same love and trust which Srila Prabhupada had already given to us, because without it you can't, you can't go out and do anything. So, that was wonderful. And I just wanted to give this thanks to, even though Srila Bhakti Rakaksila Maharaj didn't like it at all, if you would say thank you, he would smash you. Oh, you mean thank you and then you go away. Hmm? And no, 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 there's a commitment. If you got anything and you feel that you got, then you're committed. Then you stay here and do service for the rest of your life. So, <laughs> so thank you was not appreciated. So I'm not saying thank you. I'm saying I'm committed. I want to go on and I pray to get the mercy of great Vaishnavas so that I can achieve sincerity in devotional service. And then... Once again, Srila Prabhupada left the world 1977, Srila Bhakti Maharaj left the world 1988. And again we became morose, and again we thought, now how is this going to go on now? Now what's the next? So, in that difficult moment, another beautiful Vaishnava appeared on the horizon, in a very wonderful way in an extraordinary, humble way, Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Goswami Maharaj. He showed us how wonderful it is to serve the Vaishnavas and so many things he showed to us. And he received us with his open arms with his embrace and reminding us of all the details of Vaishnava life. For example, Shila, <coughs> I share this with you, it's not very philosophical, but to me it means a lot. Shila Bhakti Pramodpuri Maharaj used to have a little box. And in that box he had dust of every holy place and a few bottles with a little water from all the holy places and, uh, and of course a little uh, Everything was there. The whole dam was there. And if you watched him, he was making parikrama with his little box. And to each dust, maybe ate a little, and a prayer to Vrindavan, a prayer to Puri, a prayer to Haridas Dako Samadhi, a prayer. It was everything. And he was so entertained doing that. Uh, it was so sweet, so wonderful to see how uh, everything was so important to him. Things which we may brush over easily. Just like association with devotees can become so significant if we avoid to minimize them, ever, or any one of them. So, I saw that it manifested in his personality. He would love everybody. He wouldn't minimize. He, he was emphasizing education, it was saying, very important, we are all one, we all have the same, same chance. 
by the mercy of the Holy Name, he said, we, it doesn't matter whether you're born in the West or the East, we have all the same chance, the same duties to follow and serve Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Lord Nityananda Prabhu. And we, and we have to make very careful, uh, make efforts that the new generations will be well educated in, in the science of Krishna consciousness. I mean, he was a publisher, he was pu working in the Gaudiya Mats publication department, and he was the person who was installing practically all the deities in the Gaudiya Mat. Uh, they were installed by him. He was like the expert on these rituals and all these <laughs> wonderful things. And we were so lucky. And while I was at Vishrila Sridhamat, and while I was with Srila Purimat, no doubt I met so many other Vaishnavas, Srila Narayan came regularly visiting there. And so it was a sweet meeting of all the Vaishnavas. And that sweet meeting, that's an ongoing affair. That is, to me, that is the spirit of Vishwa Vaishnava Lachala. And of course, then we go home and they work hard. It's not only that all day we meet and have nice talks. That's also nice, but we all have to go and do so many things to develop and organize whatever our Guru Dev has given us as an assignment so we can uh, have a substantial presentation of Krishna consciousness. But personally, to my uh, own heart's feeling, it is such an important thing that we do things in such a way that the general public will recognize the Vaishnavas as the lovers of God and the servants of humanity and the servants of truth. I personally feel that was how my Guru Dev came for. And I mean, of course, he wanted to give pure love to Krishna, to his disciples as a topmost priority. But he wanted the whole world to be Krishna conscious. He wanted everybody to have a respect. And uh, whenever we, as his disciples, did something which caused the opposite, that the people in the world were not so impressed by the devotees, then that would upset him. He didn't like that at all. He made many times, one time he was uh, approached by Tripurari Maharaj, what is the secret of book distribution? How can we distribute more of these transcendental literatures to the people? And, and he made very clear that he didn't mean, his interest was not in numbers of distribution, his interest was that the people would really, really be ca captured, ca captivated in the heart by the devotees' presentation and that they want, now, nowadays, even book distribution is not so substantially important as in those days, because people can get all the Vaishnava books practically for free on the internet. They can load down the entire Bhagavatam, which at that time was a dream. We, we were enthused as brahmacharis, go out and make sure every house has a book of Srila Prabhupada. That was our uh, driving force to go out from morning to the night, winter and summer, to go door to door in the, in the shopping malls and giving the people a book and begging them to give a donation. Like real beggars, but loving beggars because we love, we only begged them for their own benefit. We didn't need anything from them. We didn't want to avoid working. So uh, this, this spirit of compassion, generosity, association of devotees, this, uh, this love and when you meet other devotees and you feel just even more encouraged, like who could not be encouraged seeing such a wonderful amount of devotees here together chanting and dancing? It's not possible. So uh, in this way I'm also grateful that somehow other it never stops. <coughs> And then there will be another Vaishnava, and another Vaishnava, and another Vaishnava. And I hope, I pray, that when I have to give up this body, there will be Vaishnavas and tell me, think of Krishna, don't forget Prabhupada. Do something in the last moment. That is my prayer. And I'm so thankful, I'm very impressed by Srila Narayan Maharaj, sacrificing himself, his else, so much to be with all of us. This is a very stalwart example for <laughs> because it's not easy not only to travel and preach but to, to tolerate all the headaches which come from the conditioned souls 
that is really some some amazing tolerance has to be there amazing love and we pray to get this love so we can serve our guru dev also thank you very much for your sangha for your association hari krishna Coming to our Bhagavad classes. Yesterday I told that Mother Jasoda wanted to give face and sweet butter to Krishna so that he should not go and what is still butter from anywhere. So Now she was shining yoga and singing, being observed in Krishna's sweet pastimes. Govinda Damo Tadamadeji, Govinda Damo Tadamadeji, Krishna Krishna was sleeping. the morning in brahma mahurta he heard this song he naturally that anywhere any devotee can see being object he cannot stay there <coughs> so he wanted to come he saw here and there oh very mother i am hungry i want to take Had breast milk, but he could not find. He began to weep very loud. Mother will hear and then will come. But she was totally absorbed in singing. So Krishna began to try. Come from pain, but he can jump from the sky to ocean in super mode. Both incarnation, both incarnation, in both coordination, he can jump from there, but he cannot come down from the way. <laughs> Anyhow, he can fight with. Then Kasipu and others, but he cannot. He can take Govardhan on his finger, but now he cannot hmm, come down from this. Anyhow, by by difficulty, he came down, crying more. <coughs> but Jasoda Ma, mother was not hearing. Then what began? Afterward, <coughs> Om Jnana Timiranda Sya Jnana Jana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Bhena Tasmai Sri Prave Nama. So this very beautiful. and well known pastime of uh shri krishna yasoda nandan krishna in brindavan shila gurudev is beginning to set the scene for this beautiful pastime as he told shri krishna at that age was very tiny and it was very difficult for him to even slide down from the bed he had to slide down on his belly coming down on his little legs and coming down to the floor and when he came down to the floor just like a little child is looking for his mother when he has woken up so krishna he was rubbing his eyes and tears were coming from his eyes and the kajal that mother yashoda puts the eyeliner black blackish eyeliner around krishna's little lotus eyes 
oh, it was becoming rubbed all over his cheeks by his hands, and his, his chest, his beautiful lotus chest, had these uh, teardrops coming on them. And in this way, little Krishna began to walk, looking for his mother. Then he came into the room where his mother was stirring the pot of milk on the stove. Because as we heard yesterday, Srila Gurudev explained that Mother Yashoda was concerned about these reports that she was receiving from the elderly gopis in Braj that, oh, Krishna is such a butter thief and yogurt thief and he is coming to their houses and stealing. So, Mother Yashoda, although she didn't fully believe this, but nevertheless she thought, oh, if he is going to some other houses, why he should do this? I will make very, very special yogurt. And as Gurudev described yesterday, she went and personally milked the cow. She brought this milk, brought it to the stove and began to uh, boil this milk so that she could prepare and make it into yogurt. And from that yogurt she would make very beautiful butter, very sweet butter. And then with this she would serve Krishna and satisfy Krishna. So now Mother Yashoda, who was stirring this pot of milk on the fire, suddenly little Krishna came up to her and he began to pull on her sari, indicating that he wanted to suck her breast milk. So Mother Yashoda, she left the pot there and she brought Krishna onto her lap. And she sat uh, and uh, brought Krishna uh, next to her breasts and, and began to feed him her breast milk. She covered her, uh, the head of Krishna with her sari and she began to uh, gaze upon the beautiful face of her child, so sweet, so, so wonderful and so satisfied to be there on his mother's lap. But suddenly at the same time that Mother Yashoda was breastfeeding Krishna, suddenly she noticed that the milk on the stove, it was uh, starting to boil up and starting to come over the pot into the fire. So our Acharyas have explained what was happening. This milk also in Braja, all the objects in Braja are transcendental servants of Krishna. And this milk was also thinking that, oh, how will I ever have a chance to serve Krishna? Because here I'm seeing that Mother Yashoda, she's serving her breast milk to Krishna. And Mother Yashoda's uh, capacity of giving breast milk to Krishna is like a vast unlimited ocean. And Krishna's desire to drink that milk is also unlimited. He has such an unlimited capacity to consume that milk so then how will I have a chance to serve Krishna? And at this point the milk decided, then I will simply give up my life, I will commit suicide into the fire. And the milk began to boil over into the fire. So Mother Yashoda, she is noticing this, and she, Mother Yashoda also, she has compassion for all, and she wants to see that all will have the opportunity to serve her beloved Krishna. So Mother Yashoda, very quickly, she, uh, she put Krishna down and she ran quickly to the fire and now she was looking after the milk. But Krishna, at that moment, that he was suddenly put down by his mother onto the floor, he became upset and he felt, oh, my mother is neglecting me like this. And just like a stubborn child and, and uh, pouting, Krishna thought, oh, well then, if she is doing this to me, then I will have to go and make some mischief. So Krishna went into the room where Mother Yashoda keeps the uh, yogurt pots. In India, when they make yogurt, they also put them into clay pots. And they hang them sometimes from the ceiling, and some of them are on the floor. So when Krishna came into the yogurt pot room, oh, then he saw one pot of yogurt on the floor and he took one uh, pestle where you have a grinding mortar and pestle and he took this he heavy object and he hit the pot, breaking the pot. At that moment, 
the, yo the white, beautiful yogurt began to flow out from the pot all over the floor like a stream. And Krishna was observing how beautiful this was. Then Krishna, he began to take this yogurt and there were also some monkeys nearby. Krishna was also feeding some of the monkeys and his little lotus feet were walking in this puddle of yogurt and making little footprints all over the room like this. So, in this way, Krishna was very satisfied and happy. But Mother Yashoda, now when she took care of the pot, she suddenly came back and she found that Krishna was gone. So now, she began to search, where is little Krishna? And she went over to where that room was and inside of the entryway of the room, she saw these little footprints of Krishna's in, from the yogurt. And she thought, aha! So he is here. Now Mother Yashoda began to think, what is this? All these reports from the neighborhood uh, elderly gopis, they have some truth in them. Perhaps my son is such a yogurt and butter thief. So then from a distance, very carefully, like a cat, Mother Yashoda was creeping up very quietly. And she also picked up one stick nearby in her hand. And little Krishna was sitting there and he was taking the yogurt, scooping it out of the pot and, and enjoying this yogurt. And when he was uh, busily absorbed in this way, suddenly the monkeys that were nearby, they gave some indication to Krishna. And he suddenly turned around and then he saw Mother Yasoda there. And Mother Yasoda had a stick in her hand. So Krishna very quickly, he uh, got up from that place and now he went running outside of the room. He dodged by Mother Yashoda and he ran outside of the room. And now Mother Yashoda turned and she began to run after Krishna with this stick in her hand. So Krishna was running, he ran outside of the house, he ran into the courtyard, and now in the town of Braja Vrindavan, Mother Yashoda began to chase after Krishna. And all of the neighborhood gopis and the neighborhood people, they began to see this amazing sight that little Krishna with his tiny little legs was running very fast and Mother Yasoda is chasing after Krishna and trying to catch him with the stick in her hand and Krishna is running and he's going in a zigzag way so that Mother Yasoda cannot catch Krishna and, and she's trying and laboring very hard because Mother Yasoda was extremely beautiful and very shapely with large hips and breasts and it was not so easy for her to run after Krishna but Krishna was running in a zigzag way, so he couldn't be caught. So as he was running, then he began to look back, and he saw Mother Yashoda coming, and he was looking very frightened like this. But finally, from behind, Mother Yashoda finally ran up, and she caught Krishna. And now, Krishna was, was standing there, very afraid, and no maya maya, like this. He was saying, no mother, please don't beat me, don't beat me. And Mother Yashoda understood, oh, Krishna is very frightened that I have this stick in my hand. So then she put the stick down. And she said, oh, now, now I have understood actually you are a butter thief. So I know that I must give you some kind of punishment and I must detain you so that you cannot create any more mischief. And so those who were the accomplice in your, in your task, this mortar and pestle, pestle, you were climbing on top of this mortar to try and get these yogurt pots. So now I will tie you to this grinding mortar and this way you will be kept safely here. So Mother Yashoda was thinking of Krishna's protection and she was thinking also that Krishna should, should get some kind of punishment so that he learns. So then in this way, Mother Yashoda decided, okay, now I'm going to uh, try to tie Krishna to this grinding mortar. And she took some rope and she tied it around the grinding mortar. Thank and you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Not here? Coming. The Sotama is 
going to find Krishna. Krishna is waiting. Is it bhakti to wait with Krishna? Yes. First of all, I offer my sins as Lotus Vidya Guru Pada Padma, on Vishnu Pada Sissimad Bhakti Ram Narayan Goswami Maharaj. Why did he finish on our bhakti? And then tell Josodama is going to find him to chastise Krishna is busy. How do you feel? Sri Rupa Goswami has described Anyabilasita Sunyam Jnana Karmadi Navatam Anakulena Krishna Nusayam Bhaktir Uttamam. To keep very short, Bhakti means to do that which is what is for the benefit of Krishna, not necessarily which will appear to make Krishna happily external, externally. For example, we gave the example on the first day. When Ravan was fighting with Ram, then Ram, he also is Bir Purush, he likes to fight. So he felt great happiness in the battle with Ravan. But we cannot call this Bhakti because Ravan was actually trying to kill Ram. In the same way, Madhya Soda, even though she is threatening to beat Krishna, and Krishna is weeping, it's called Uttam Bhakti of the topmost class. Why? Because Madhya Soda is thinking, if I do not tie up my son, then his mind is so disturbed, maybe he'll run off into the forest and become lost. Or I should chastise my son and make him good. This is called Batsali Ras. Where Madhya Soda, she has forgotten that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And Krishna has also forgotten that he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Both are dancing under the influence of Prema Bhakti, Yoga Maya. So this is a very high example of Prem. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, the pure devotee has bound Krishna with the rope of love. Therefore, Nayam Sri Api Bhagavan, Nayam Badit Sri Na Baba, Na Anga Sri, Na Sri Api Anga Sankshaya, Prasadi Lebele Gatre Bandabat Tad Mukti Dat. The mercy given to Madhya Soda was not given even to Lakshmi, who always stays on the body of Krishna. What to speak of? Na Barinshi, Na Bhavo, no Lord Brahma, no Lord Shiva. Because only Madhya Soda could tie Bhagavan, who gives mukti to everyone. And Krishna frees everyone from the bondage of material existence, but Madhya Soda could bind that person who has no inside and no outside, the all pervading Lord. Thank Therefore, you. very good. Thank you. Have you heard my question? That Yashodama is going to buy Krishna. Krishna is weeping. She is chastising. She, Krishna was taking the breast milk of Yashoda. And Yashoda, by post of her, sat down. So powerful Krishna. Oh. And Josodamaya went, how this is? Is it this bhakti? And after that. Om Jnana Tvarandhasa Jnana so Srila Gurudev is raising the point that Madhi Shoda, she is taking a stick and threatening Krishna. When he wants to drink from her breast milk, then she put him down. Though he is so powerful that Putana could not put him down. Who has the strength of? 60,000 elephants, Putana said, leave me child, but she could not put him down. 
and mother you showed him with only one hand, put him down. And Krishna was upset, is it bhakti or not? So Srila Rupa Goswami Pada has given the definition of bhakti. Anya vilashita shunyam, jnana kama ganavaritam, anukulyena kashtanu, shilanam bhakti ir uttama. The continuous, unbroken cultivation of all endeavors of the body, mind and words, and of transcendental moods, which are meant exclusively for the benefit of Krishna, completely devoid of even the slightest smell of any other desire, and not covered by karma, jnana, yoga, etc. That is called Uttama Bhakti. So, if one will say that activities that give pleasure to Krishna are Bhakti, then a defect will come in the definition. Hmm? There are two types of defects that can befall a definition. One is called Avyapti Dosh, the other is called Ati Vyapti Dosh. Avyapti Dosh means that the definition is too narrow to explain what Bhakti is because there will be areas of Bhakti which don't fit within the definition. So it's too narrow, Avyapti. It does not cover everything which is included under Bhakti. And Ati Vyapti Dosh means that the definition is overextended, the fault of overextension of a definition. In other words, it will include things which are not the Bhakti. So if we will say that the activities which give happiness to Krishna, this is Bhakti, then the de both defects will be there. Why? Because here, Madhya Shoda, she's, she loves Krishna, but she's not giving happiness to him, he's crying, he's afraid, he's trying to run away, even. So Madhya Yashoda's activity would not fit inside the definition of Bhakti if Bhakti is just giving happiness to Krishna. Mm? So that would be the Avyapti Dosh. On the other hand, when Chanur and Mustik, the wrestlers in the arena of Kamsa, were beating Krishna, oh, he liked that. He was tasting Viraras, the heroic fighting mood, and he was happy. But they have no love for Krishna. So that their activity is not Bhakti. So if just giving happiness to Krishna, was the definition of bhakti, then Chanur and Mustik will be doing bhakti. So this is not true, this will be the defect of Ati Vyapti Dosh, overextension of the definition. So what is bhakti? Bhakti is the Krishna Anushilanam, the cultivation activities in relation to Krishna, but those activities must be Anakul Yena. Anakul Yena means, sometimes the idea is given favorable,